Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and undecideds. DK here, and I'm exhausted. I just got back from an estate auction. Um, this was one of the finds there. It's an Ampeg Portaflex. I believe it's an SB12, but there's some other things that sort of have me head scratching a little bit. Um, it does have a detachable wheelie cart thing that hooks to the bottom with a thumb screw. I don't know if that was factory or later, but it has, you know, rubber feet and the regular stuff on the cabinet. If that was an aftermarket add-on, that Rolly Dolly, dude actually did a pretty cool, innovative way of putting it on. And uh, it's a combo base amp, and it's all tube. And the reason they called these Portaflex, it's like one of the earlier designs for portable tube amps. And essentially, these two latches come off, and then a vacuum tube head comes out. There's actually a really old, 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 old instrument cable in there. I don't think we'll be using that for anything, but it's interesting to have. Maybe we can use the connectors. And it looks like there's a, a pick and some other miscellaneous things in there. There's a speaker in there, 12-inch speaker. That would be appropriate for an SB12 which is what the labeling on the amplifier says, SB12. So this flips over like that. And then the speaker connection is actually made by these latches. So we're going to double check that those latches are making a real good connection. Um, but uh, physical condition of this is outstanding. It has two inputs, instrument and bass. Um, treble, bass, and volume, and I, from what I understand, these are about 20 watts, so we'll uh, take a quick look over it and hopefully fire it up and be impressed with all the magic that happens, Either that or it's going to catch fire and explode. Okay, so looking into the speaker, I found a guitar pick labeled Frank Varnell. Is that a guitar pick maker from way back in the day? I always liked big triangles. There's not too much other garbage in the case. There's uh, fiberglass on the back wall. And as you can see, the speaker leads go up to the latch. The latches. This one you can see okay with the light. Um, the speaker says Jensen Concert Series. Um, that's all I can see on it at this point. Um, I figure if we camera around on the back or something we might be able to find some more. Um, that, this thing in here, that's to hold the T-nut for the bottom dolly wheelie thing. And the baffle appears to be ported. We have a slot port right there. So, base reflex design I suppose. Get the most out of it. So we, we'll, we'll try to determine the vintage in a little bit, but let's just see if okay, it works. Tube complement going across the back, 5AR4 rectifier, 7868 power tube pair, which I think these only put out about 20-ish watts if I remember right, and then two 12AX7s that are under those shields. Those shields look uh, kind of like they got some fuzz or something on them. They probably just need to be wiped down good. Otherwise, this amp is surprisingly clean. Okay, so I plugged it in. It's a two-prong cord, but I measured the potential from the chassis to earth ground, and it doesn't look like it's more than a volt AC or DC, so if there's a death cap in there, um, we're probably going the right direction anyway. So hopefully this won't shock the crap out of me. Why do I not see a power light? Maybe the Ampeg logo lo lights up? Who knows? Let's find out. Oh, the MPEG logo does light up. Cool. Let's watch our tubes. I have our volume down at zero, so if we start hearing roaring noises... Okay, those two are glowing. Looks like a nice glow. Our rectifier's glowing. Our 12AX7's got a glow. Can't tell. I don't see them glowing. But uh, at this point, our latches are firmly connected.
connected. This one, the one's a little bit not firm, but it should be making okay contact. It, we'll, we'll tighten that up if we have to. But I have zero sound, and the volume is at zero, so that's potentially a good sign. Let's bring the volume up in here. If we hear some hiss, we do. I hear dimed absolutely to the max. There is a little bit of hiss. There is some sound. Let's try the treble pot. These aren't even scratchy. Hmm. Perhaps the previous owner did a good job of keeping the maintenance on this. Up, I suppose it's time to plug an instrument in and see if it makes noise. Okay, so we're powered up. I have a guitar because that's what was out. And we have sound. We can turn our pickups up a little bit. Still good. Turn our pickups up a little bit more. Initially, I heard some fizz. Yeah, if I really give it a big, strong chord, I get a weird fizzy oscillation. So there's, there is some kind of maintenance required here, but. Uh, so far, not too bad of an initial checkup. There, now it's got nice and fizzy, so you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's some fizz in there. We'll go do a little bit of general maintenance and see what it is. Okay, I'm actually going to end this video here. I know it sounds really boring, but uh, since the latches on the far sides there actually are the connection to the speaker, I just kind of moved the latches out so they were clamped down very tightly, and the fizzy sound kind of went away. So we will take this apart and see if anything's blown up in it, but at this point we're going to call it working okay. Um, we'll continue to test it, obviously give it a few hours, and we will give it a look over and a clean up and a bath and a polish. But for now, I think I did alright. Cool. Thanks for watching.